Hi, this is SynthChaser from SynthChaser.com. It's been a couple of years since my last TR-808 video, and I have one in here now for what hopefully should be a quick and easy repair, so I thought I'd bring you guys along. While this TR-808 looks like it's seen better days, it was working for its owner until one day it stopped, and now it appears to be completely dead. In addition to repairing it, the owner asked if I could convert it from 220 volt operation to 110 volt operation, so it can be used without a step-up transformer. But the first item of business will be to get it working again. So I'm going to be testing it with one of my step-up transformers. So let's power it on, and indeed it doesn't, doesn't seem to power on. So the first thing we'll do is we'll check the power supply. When we're measuring power rails for the purpose of seeing if the power supply is working, we want to disconnect any downstream load. Because if something that's using one of those power rails is shorted, it can pull the power rail down, or any overcurrent protection can kick in and pinch off the power rail to prevent damage to the circuit. So I'm going to go ahead and unplug this connector here, which carries the power from the power supply to the main board. Now let's put up the schematic of the power supply for a second so I can show you what I'm going to check. You can see at the top there are some numbered terminals for the power supply outputs, but they're not labeled as to what they are or what voltages to expect there. But we can pretty easily figure that out from looking at them. From left to right, pins 18 and 15 are connected to the ground pin, pin 2, of the 7805 voltage regulator. So those would be our digital ground. Pins 15 and 16 run off to the battery holder, with 15 being the negative side and 16 being the positive side. Pin 3 of the 7805 is the regulated 5 volts output. So our 5 volt rail is pin 19, and there are a couple of diodes between the battery and the 5 volt rail. The horizontal diode prevents the circuit from trying to charge the batteries, and the vertical diode prevents the battery from being drained trying to power the whole drum machine's 5 volt rail when the power is off. So terminal 17 is the battery backup rail and is powered by the batteries when the 808 is off and powered by the 5 volt rail when the 808 is on. And over on the right there's plus and minus 15 volt analog voltages and our analog ground. So let's check those voltages now in the 808. I've got it powered on. In, in addition to not labeling what those, uh, those terminals are, they don't have the numbers printed on the circuit board, but they have it in the uh, PCB layout. So I'm going to put my black lead on pin 15, which is the digital ground, and the red lead on uh, pin 16, which is the, uh, the battery positive terminal, and we are at 4.44 volts. So I'm moving this now to pin 17, which is our battery backup voltage that's supplied to the circuit board. That's 4.19 volts. Uh, so now we'll look at the 5 volt rail, which is on pin 19. And here's our problem. So we have, we have nothing here. Zero volts uh, to power the digital side of the drum machine. So um, let's check the analog rails real quickly. So um, here's the analog ground. And we have our plus 15 and our minus 15 are OK. So we just need to troubleshoot this 5 volt rail. So there's really not a lot to go wrong here. There's the transformer, a fuse after the transformer, a bridge rectifier, a small handful of capacitors, and the voltage regulator. Since we've already looked at the output voltage of the 7805 regulator, let's check the input voltage. Maybe the regulator's failed. So I'm going to put the black lead of my multimeter on the heat sink because the heat sink is connected to the tab of the regulator and the tab is connected to ground. And uh, the Pin 1 I'll measure with my red lead. So uh, let's check this out. And here I'm measuring 0 0.108, 109 volts. So it's a very low voltage and it's very slowly creeping up. So um, the fuse isn't blown because we have voltage here. If the fuse were blown, we'd have nothing. So let's take a look at this from the other end uh, and, and look at the transformer. So I'm going to switch my meter over to AC volts and look at the AC voltage across the, the uh, transformer secondary, which in this case is terminals 10 and 11, these yellow wires here. 
and we have 11.24 volts, w which is fine. Um, so where are we losing our voltage? So let me measure the AC voltage across the AC inputs of the bridge rectifier. Um, so let's go here and here, and we're measuring about 100 millivolts. Uh, it should be the same as what we saw here on the transformer, but it's not. So we measured here where I've marked in red and things were cool. The fuse isn't blown. And now we measured here where I've marked in blue and things are no longer cool. So maybe there's some other kind of problem with the fuse. So let's pop the fuse out and measure the resistance of it. The drum machine needs to be off. And generally, in-circuit resistance measurements are inaccurate, so we do need to pop the fuse out. And did you see that? I just zoomed in, and uh, so here's a close-up. The fuse just literally just came apart. Whatever adhesive the fuse manufacturer used to hold this, uh, this middle cap, let me pop that out of the fuse holder. So whatever adhesive they used to hold this metal cap on seems to have failed. And here's the, the filament. Let me, the filament, which we can see here, wasn't blown, and I guess it was still making contact since it's just kind of like tucked under that, that metal cap. Uh, it wasn't making contact well. Don't use cheap fuses you buy on Amazon or eBay or other places. Always use brand name quality fuses sourced from the manufacturer's authorized distributors like Mouser or DigiKey. Fuses are circuit protection and can protect you from injury or death and can prevent your home or studio from catching on fire. You don't want the fuses falling apart like this one. And you also need to be confident that they're actually going to blow at the specified amperage. Okay, so now I'm going to pop a new fuse in, and I'll recheck that plus 5 volt rail. And sure enough, we're getting our 5 volts. And with the 5 volt power rail restored, now the 808 is booting up. While I've got it open, I'm going to convert this from 220 volt operation to 110 volt operation, and install a North American power plug. Unfortunately, the power transformer of the 808 doesn't have dual primaries that would make this just an easy reconfiguration. You may have seen me in someone else's TR-808 video where I was designing some mods. His local tech had the original transformer rewound. I'm just going to replace the transformer with a new one that meets the specs needed. This is faster and cheaper than finding someone to rewind the transformer, and the net result is safer because we're using a brand new transformer unmolested from how the manufacturer made it. And here's the new transformer and the new three-prong plug installed. Now it's ready for its owner to lay down fresh beats like this one that I just composed. Yeah, there's a reason why I'm paid to fix them and not to play them. Anyway, while this 808 is still not the prettiest, it's working again and its owner can ditch the bulky step-up transformer. I was hoping this repair would be something more dramatic and impressive than a bad fuse, but nonetheless, I hope you found this to be an interesting look inside the TR-808 and a look at my troubleshooting process. I'm Synth Chaser. I buy broken synthesizers, sell restored synthesizers, design and sell parts and upgrades, and repair synthesizers for customers all over the world. Feel free to hit me up at SynthChaser.com. Synth